The Intelligent Around View Monitor is a parking aid that provides views of your vehicle's position in relation to surrounding objects. There are cameras located in the center of the front grille, on the outside mirrors, and above the rear license plate. The Intelligent Around View Monitor displays a combination of views with the ignition switch in the on position. Front view shows the area in front of your vehicle. Rear view shows the area behind your vehicle. Bird's eye view shows a top view around your vehicle. Front side view shows the area around and ahead of the passenger side front wheel. Full screen rear view shows a wider picture of the area directly behind the vehicle than the standard rear view. Press the camera button repeatedly to cycle through the available view combinations or to return to the screen which was displayed before the camera button was pressed. The available views vary based on the position of the shift lever. Certain view combinations are displayed in a split screen format. The camera display will not be shown when the vehicle speed is above approximately 6 miles per hour. The front and rear views display the approximate distance between an object and your vehicle with colored lines. The red line designates an object is approximately 1.5 feet away. The yellow line designates an object is approximately 3 feet away. The green line designates an object is approximately 7 feet away. And if so equipped, the second green line designates an object is approximately 10 feet away. When the steering wheel is turned, predicted course lines are also displayed on the screen. These lines show the approximate path the vehicle will take. The predicted course lines move in conjunction with how far the steering wheel is turned. If so equipped, the Moving Object Detection MOD system operates when the intelligent around view monitor is active and can help inform the driver of moving objects surrounding the vehicle when driving out of parking structures, garages, or maneuvering in parking lots. A blue MOD icon is displayed on the view where the MOD system is operative and a gray MOD icon is displayed on the view where the MOD system is not operative. When the shift lever is in the drive position and the vehicle speed is below approximately 6 miles per hour, the MOD system detects moving objects in the front view. When the shift lever is in reverse and the vehicle speed is below approximately 6 miles per hour, the MOD system detects moving objects in the rear view. If the MOD system detects a moving object near the vehicle, a yellow frame is displayed on the view where the objects are detected. The yellow frame remains on the screen as long as the MOD system continues to detect moving objects. The MOD system will not operate if any door or the trunk is open. To enable or disable the MOD system, press the menu button, touch settings, camera, then moving object detection to toggle the MOD system on or off. This is one of the available systems for your vehicle. The menu options may vary slightly from the displayed menus. When you connect a compatible phone to the system, its phone book entries will begin transferring to the vehicle automatically. The transfer time varies by phone model and depends on the size of the handset phone book. Once the entire phone book is transferred, the phone book key on the phone main menu screen will become active. Touch it to view the entries in the phone book and then touch an entry to dial. The quick dial feature allows you to save up to 20 phone book entries as favorites for easy access. To set a number as a quick dial entry, touch phone on the launch bar or press the phone button on the steering wheel. Touch quick dial. Touch edit. Touch add new. Then choose a method for entering the phone number. You can enter a number by using the call history, the phone book, or by entering it on the touch screen. Depending on your cell phone, the system may automatically download your entire phone book to the vehicle's Bluetooth system. If the phone book does not download automatically, the phone book can be manually downloaded. First, press the menu button, touch settings, touch phone, phone book, then download entire phone book. The transfer procedure may vary depending on the cellular phone. See your cellular phone manufacturer's owner's manual for details. <laughs> If your vehicle is not equipped with this instrument panel, please see your owner's manual for more information. The Intelligent Driver Alertness is a system which helps detect driver fatigue and decreased attentiveness and encourages the driver to take a rest. When the vehicle is traveling above 37 miles per hour for a period of time, the system monitors steering behavior to detect changes from the normal pattern. If the system detects driver fatigue or that driver attention is decreasing, 
The message, take a break, appears in the vehicle information display and a chime sounds. The system can provide multiple warnings per trip, but resets each time the ignition switch is cycled from on to off and back on. To enable or disable the system, use these controls to select settings, driver assistance, then driver attention alert to toggle the system on or off. To warm the steering wheel, start the engine and then push the heated steering wheel switch. The indicator light illuminates and remains on as long as the system is activated. The system automatically turns on and off to maintain a constant preset temperature. This is a normal operating characteristic and does not indicate a malfunction. To turn the system off manually, push the switch again. To warm the steering wheel, start the engine and then push the heated steering wheel switch. The indicator light illuminates and remains on as long as the system is activated. The system automatically turns on and off to maintain a constant preset temperature. This is a normal operating characteristic and does not indicate a malfunction. To turn the system off manually, push the switch again. This is one of the available systems for your vehicle. The menu options may vary slightly from the displayed menus. When using the voice recognition system, it is possible to skip the system's voice prompts. Push the talk switch on the steering wheel. The system responds with a list of instructions or available commands. It is not necessary to wait for the system to finish speaking. Simply push the talk switch a second time when the system is giving voice commands. You can speak a command once the tone sounds and the face icon changes on the display screen. This procedure can be repeated anytime you wish to interrupt the voice prompt. This is one of the available systems for your vehicle. The menu options may vary slightly from the displayed menus. These controls allow you to operate the Bluetooth system from your steering wheel. Here are some helpful tips to get the most out of your Bluetooth system. For recommended phones and detailed instructions for connecting a compatible cellular phone, please visit www.nissanusa.com slash Bluetooth. When using the Bluetooth system, keep the interior of your vehicle as quiet as possible. Close windows and direct air vents away from the roof and your face. To operate the voice recognition system, press and release the talk switch on the steering wheel. The in-vehicle microphone receives the command and the system provides voice feedback when the command is accepted. When speaking a command, wait until the system tone sounds and the face icon on the display changes. Begin speaking within 3.5 seconds after the tone. Speak in a natural voice without pausing between words. You can push the talk switch to skip prompts at any time. The help command can be used at any time to hear a list of available commands. Use single digits when speaking phone numbers. For example, 500 should be spoken as 500. To increase or decrease the volume of the phone prompts, push the plus or minus volume control switches on the steering wheel or turn the volume control dial on the audio system. To cancel a voice recognition session, press and hold this button. The Intelligent Cruise Control, or ICC system, works the same as the conventional cruise control, with the added feature of maintaining a set distance from the vehicle in front of you. Vehicles equipped with ICC also have the ability to operate in standard cruise control mode. To access the conventional cruise control, push and hold this switch. To access ICC, push and quickly release the same switch. In order to switch between ICC and conventional modes, turn the system off and back on to select the preferred mode. When traffic is clear, the ICC will maintain a set speed between 20 and 90 miles per hour. If the vehicle detects a slower moving vehicle ahead, the ICC will lower your speed to match the slower vehicle. Once the road is clear again, the ICC will resume your set speed. There are three different distance settings that can be used long, middle, and short. The system starts in long, and by pushing this switch, you can cycle through the other distance options. The distance to the vehicle ahead depends on speed, so the higher the speed, the further the distance. Push this switch to set the cruising speed. Push this switch to accelerate, or this switch to decelerate. Press this button or tap your brake pedal to cancel the ICC system. Push this switch to resume the cruising speed. Push this switch to turn the system off. To ensure proper function of the system, keep these areas clean and free of obstruction. If any of these areas are blocked, 
this indicator and or this warning message may be displayed. The indicator will flash when only the camera is blocked. When safely parked, clear any obstructions to resume normal system operation. If the problem persists after clearing any obstructions, it is recommended you visit a Nissan dealer for service. If your vehicle is not equipped with this instrument panel, please see your owner's manual for more information. Your instrument panel lights up whenever the ignition is on. This control to the left of the steering column, just below the vent, adjusts the brightness of your instrument panel lights to the desired level for night driving. Press the plus sign to increase the brightness or the minus sign to decrease it. Press this button and the system will automatically regulate and maintain fan speed, airflow and temperature in the cabin. If fan speed, airflow mode or defrost settings are manually adjusted, the system will switch from auto mode to your control. Turn these dials to set the desired temperature for each side of the vehicle. Press this button to synchronize the driver and front passenger's climate settings. When active, the indicator light on the button will illuminate. Press this button to select from the available airflow modes. This icon indicates air will flow from the front defroster and the foot outlets. The arrows indicate whether the center and side vents, the foot outlets, or both the center and side vents and the foot outlets are active. Press this button to recirculate air inside your vehicle. This increases AC efficiency and helps to block outside odors. Press the button again to draw in fresh outside air, improving your vehicle's defogging performance. To set the intake mode to auto, press and hold the button until the indicator light flashes twice. Press this button to manually turn the air conditioner on or off. In hot or humid conditions, a visible mist may be seen coming from the vents when the air conditioner is active. This does not indicate a malfunction. To defrost or defog front and side windows, press this button. The AC indicator light may also illuminate because the AC compressor is activated to help dry the air and improve window clearing performance. The air can still be fully warmed with the AC activated. Press this button to defrost or defog the rear window, and if so equipped, the outside mirrors. If not turned off manually, this function will automatically deactivate in a period of time. For windshield de-icing, set the temperature to maximum heat with the fan set to high. There is a temperature sensor on top of the dashboard that regulates the automatic heater and air conditioner settings. Please keep this area clear of papers and other materials. You can return to automatic control of the heater and air conditioner system at any time by pressing this button. When operating the power moonroof, the switch does not need to be held. When the ignition switch is in the on position, the power moonroof can either tilt up and down or slide open and closed using this switch. To open or close the moonroof all the way, slide the switch forward or backward. To stop the moonroof, push the switch once while it is moving. In order to tilt the moonroof up, push and release the switch. To tilt it back down, slide the switch forward. Open and close the sunshade by sliding it forward or backward. When the ignition is turned off, power to the moonroof continues for a period of time. If either front door is open during this period of time, power to the moonroof is canceled. If the moonroof does not operate properly, perform the following procedure to initialize the moonroof. Place the ignition switch in the on position. If the moonroof is open, close it fully by repeatedly pushing the switch forward. Once fully closed, push the switch forward again and hold it there for approximately 15 seconds. Release the moonroof switch after the moonroof moves slightly up and down, and then back up to the fully tilted up position. Now, push and hold the switch forward again. Release the switch after the moonroof cycles from the tilted up position to the closed position, then to the open position, and finally, back to the closed position. Check to see if the moonroof switch operates normally. Initialization is complete if the moonroof operates normally. If it doesn't operate normally, it is recommended you visit a Nissan dealer. In addition to the normal drive mode and the sport mode, your vehicle has eco mode. The normal drive mode is the default mode for your vehicle, so you do not need to activate anything for the normal drive mode. Press the sport button to activate sport mode. The sport mode gives the driver a feeling of enhanced performance, but fuel economy may be reduced. This indicator light illuminates when in sport mode. Push the sport button again to turn the sport mode off. 
To maximize your fuel economy, use the Eco Mode. The Eco Mode switch is located on the instrument panel near the steering wheel. Push this switch to turn the Eco Mode on. The Eco Indicator light illuminates and remains on as long as the Eco Mode is active. Push the Eco switch again to turn the Eco Mode off. If the accelerator is pressed, the Eco Mode will not turn off. It is recommended to not use the Eco Mode when you are driving on a steep slope or when you have a heavy load in the vehicle. This is one of the available control panels for your vehicle. If your vehicle is equipped with a different control panel, see your owner's manual for additional information. You can use this touchscreen display and these control panel buttons to view information and adjust settings for various vehicle systems. Press the menu button to view the touchscreen menu where you can access vehicle apps and settings. The launch bar located at the bottom of the screen can be used to access the following settings. Phone to place a phone call. Audio to play your radio and other media sources. Connections to manage your connections to external devices and to set up Bluetooth streaming or over-the-air system updates. Information for additional information on vehicle applications or vehicle software. Settings to adjust your system settings. Touch these keys to view additional menu screens. These screens are customizable to include your preferred widgets and apps. The large icons are called widgets and include options such as audio information and clock display. The small icons are shortcuts, which you can customize based on your most frequently used features. For example, you can create shortcuts for a specific function, like call history. Touch settings on the launch bar, then customize home menu to adjust these settings. Touch the tab for either widgets or shortcuts and drag an icon onto the page layouts at the bottom of the screen to add a widget or shortcut to your menu screens. Or drag an item to this icon and let go to remove it. Touch settings on the launch bar to customize additional settings. Touch the plus or minus keys to adjust the settings of an item. To return to the previous screen, press the back button on the control panel. Your vehicle is equipped with a Tire Pressure Monitoring System TPMS. The low tire pressure warning light will illuminate and this warning message will appear in the vehicle information display when one or more tires are low on pressure and air is needed. Adjust the tire pressure to the recommended cold tire pressure shown on the tire and loading information label. This label provides important information at a glance. It lists proper tire size and pressure. It also lists the maximum number of occupants for your vehicle and its maximum load capacity. Please see your owner's manual for the location of the tire and loading information label on your vehicle. The tires are considered cold after the vehicle has been parked for three hours or more or driven less than one mile at a moderate speed. You can check the pressure of all tires except the spare tire if so equipped on the vehicle information display. Use these controls to navigate the vehicle information display until this screen appears. The order of the tire pressure shown corresponds with the actual order of the tire position. When adding air to an under-inflated tire, the TPMS with Easy Fill Tire Alert provides visual and audible signals outside the vehicle to help you inflate the tires to the recommended cold tire pressure. To use this system, ensure that the vehicle is parked in a safe and level place and that the parking brake is applied. Place the ignition switch in the on position, but do not start the engine. Add air to the tire, and after a few seconds, the hazard indicators will start flashing. If the hazard indicators do not flash within approximately 15 seconds after starting to inflate the tire, it indicates that the Easy Fill Tire Alert is not operating. After the correct tire pressure is reached, the horn beeps once and the hazard indicators stop flashing. If the tire is overinflated, more than approximately 4 pounds per square inch, the horn beeps again and the hazard indicators flash three times. To correct this, push the core of the valve stem on the tire briefly to release the pressure. When the pressure reaches the correct level, the horn beeps once. After tire pressures are adjusted, drive the vehicle at speeds above 16 miles per hour. The warning and indicator light will disappear. If the low tire pressure warning light flashes for approximately one minute and then remains on after you turn the ignition on, 
the TPMS is not functioning properly. It is recommended you visit a Nissan dealer and have the system checked. Tire pressure rises and falls depending on the heat caused by the vehicle's operation and the outside temperature. Low outside temperature can lower the temperature of the air inside the tire, which can cause a lower tire inflation pressure. This may cause the low tire pressure warning light to illuminate. The tire pressure monitoring system does not detect a sudden drop in tire pressure, as with a tire blowout, and it is not a substitute for proper tire maintenance. Check the pressure in all tires, including the spare, often and always prior to long-distance trips. Your vehicle has a parking brake to the left of the brake pedal. To apply the parking brake, fully depress this pedal. To release, ensure the shift lever is in the park position. Firmly place your right foot on the brake pedal. Then, with your left foot, press the parking brake pedal a second time to release it. This indicator light comes on when the ignition is on and the parking brake is applied. When releasing the parking brake, make sure the light is off before driving. If your vehicle is equipped with this system, your vehicle software can be updated with over-the-air updates through a secure Wi-Fi connection. Only 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi networks are able to be connected. It is recommended that you have a strong signal strength. Connect your vehicle in a well-ventilated area to prevent exposure to hazardous fumes. To connect to your Wi-Fi network, press Menu, then touch Connections, and touch the Wi-Fi tab. Touch your Wi-Fi network name from the listings and enter your Wi-Fi password when prompted, and touch OK. The connected message will appear under the network name when your vehicle is successfully connected. To manually update your software, push Menu, Touch Info, Touch System Information, Touch Software Update. From this screen, you can touch Update Method to change whether your system automatically notifies you of updates. To initiate updates, touch Start Software Update, then touch Check for Update. The next screen will indicate if the software is currently up to date or if there is an update to download. After the update process is complete, a message will indicate that you need to restart your vehicle to complete the update process. After turning your vehicle off, wait 20 minutes before restarting to reboot the system. Located below the driver's side instrument panel is the hood release handle. Pull it and the hood will spring up slightly. Outside the vehicle, push this lever at the front of the hood to the side as shown. Raise the hood and then insert the support rod into this slot. When closing the hood, lower to approximately 12 inches above the latch and release it. Your hood should lock into place. Before driving, verify that the hood is firmly latched. The Intelligent Keys system allows you to conveniently lock and unlock the vehicle without ever removing the key fob from your pocket or purse. To unlock a door from outside the vehicle, have the Intelligent Key with you and then push this switch on the door handle, if so equipped. That door will unlock. Push the switch again within one minute to unlock the rest of the exterior locks. To lock your vehicle, push any door handle's request switch once all doors have been closed. These functions are available when the intelligent key is within approximately two and a half feet of the corresponding request switch. The intelligent key has remote keyless entry functions that can operate within approximately 33 feet of the vehicle. Press this button to unlock the driver's door. Quickly press this button again to unlock the remaining exterior locks. Press this button to lock your vehicle. The hazard lights will flash and the horn will beep to let you know the doors have been locked. If you exit the vehicle and close the door without the intelligent key, all doors will unlock and a warning chime will sound. Pressing and holding both the lock and unlock buttons for more than 4 seconds will deactivate the horn beep feature. The hazard lights will flash three times, letting you know the feature has been turned off. To turn it back on, press and hold both buttons again for longer than 4 seconds. The hazard lights will flash once and the horn will beep once. Your intelligent key is also equipped with a panic alarm button. To activate the panic alarm, press and hold this button. The alarm can be deactivated by pressing any button on the key fob. In the event that the intelligent key battery is dead, you can find a mechanical key on the back side of the key fob. Release the lock knob to slide out the mechanical key. 
Up to four intelligent keys can be used with one vehicle, as long as the key is registered with a Nissan dealer prior to using the system. This light on the key fob blinks to signify that a signal is being transmitted. The number of blinks identifies which of the assigned key fobs is being used. The intelligent key contains sensitive electrical components. Please avoid these circumstances that could affect its operation. Avoid dropping or striking it against another object. Keep it away from water. Keep it away from equipment with magnetic fields, including computers, cell phones, TVs, and audio accessories. And avoid using a keychain that contains a magnet. Apple CarPlay is a feature that transfers the display and control of some of your iPhone functions to the vehicle's center display screen. For a full list of available functions and iPhone model compatibility, visit www.apple.com slash iOS slash CarPlay. Connect your iPhone using the cable that came with your phone to a USB port. A message will appear on the display to confirm whether or not you want to use the Apple CarPlay feature. Touch Yes. You may change the settings so that Apple CarPlay will not automatically connect every time your phone is plugged into your vehicle. To adjust these settings, press Menu, then touch Connections, touch Apps, touch this icon next to the device name, then enable after USB connection to set the feature to Always, Ask or Never. From this menu, you can also touch Nissan's Help for Apple CarPlay for a list of helpful tips. After your iPhone is recognized by the USB connection, the vehicle's center display screen will change to a menu of available iPhone functions. Touch an icon to access that function. Touch this icon to return to the Apple CarPlay main menu. To return to normal vehicle functions or menus on the center display, press the menu button. To return to the Apple CarPlay screen, touch the Apple CarPlay icon on the launch bar. To access Siri while connected to Apple CarPlay, Press and hold the talk button on the steering wheel, or touch and hold this key on the Apple CarPlay screen. Some Siri functions are not available while driving. For best results when using Siri, speak clearly and reduce background noise by closing the windows and moonroof if so equipped. Also, direct the vents so that they are not pointing toward the vehicle microphone. To exit Siri operation, press the talk button on the steering wheel, or touch this key on the Apple CarPlay screen. <laughs> If your vehicle is not equipped with this instrument panel, please see your owner's manual for more information. The Intelligent Forward Collision Warning, or IFCW system, automatically turns on each time the ignition switch is placed in the on position. It can help alert the driver when there is sudden braking of a second vehicle traveling in front of the vehicle directly ahead in the same lane. The system uses a sensor located on the front of the vehicle to measure the distance to those vehicles traveling ahead of you. If there is a risk of a forward collision, the system warns the driver by blinking the vehicle ahead detection indicator and sounding an alert. The system operates at speeds above approximately 3 miles per hour. Perform the following steps to turn the system on or off. Use these controls to select settings. Driver assistance. Emergency brake. Then front to toggle the system on or off. To ensure proper function of the system, keep these areas clean and free of obstruction. If any of these areas are blocked, this indicator and or this warning message may be displayed. The indicator will flash when only the camera is blocked. When safely parked, clear any obstructions to resume normal system operation. If the problem persists after clearing any obstructions, it is recommended you visit a Nissan dealer for service. If your vehicle is not equipped with this instrument panel, please see your owner's manual for more information. The Lane Departure Warning, or LDW, activates at speeds of approximately 37 miles per hour and above when the lane markings are clear. The system monitors the lane markers on the traveling lane using a camera unit located above the inside mirror. When the camera detects that the vehicle approaches the left or the right side of the traveling lane, the system warns the driver with a warning light and intermittent steering vibration. When the LDW is activated, the vehicle information display shows the lane markings as bright lines in the assistance graphic in the display area. To enable or disable the system, use these controls to select settings. Driver assistance. Lane. Then lane departure warning to toggle the system on or off. 
If your vehicle is not equipped with this instrument panel, please see your owner's manual for more information. The rear cross traffic alert helps alert the driver of approaching vehicles when the driver is backing out of a parking space. RCTA operates when the shift lever is in the reverse position and the vehicle speed is less than approximately 5 miles per hour. If the radar detects an approaching vehicle from the side, a chime sounds and the blind spot warning rear cross traffic alert indicator light on the side of the approaching vehicle flashes. There may be instances when you want to turn the rear cross traffic alert system off. To enable or disable the system, use these controls to select Settings, Driver Assistance, then Rear Cross Traffic Alert to toggle the system. Your vehicle may include Nissan Connect connected features and services, such as emergency SOS calling, automatic collision notification, and remote service. This audio system includes an AM FM radio, USB interface, Bluetooth streaming audio, and if so equipped, Sirius XM radio. Sirius XM radio is included for a period of time from the original sale date of the vehicle. A variety of factors can affect satellite radio reception including weather, trees, bridges, tunnels, parking garages, tall buildings and ground-based AM or FM transmitters. To help ensure quality reception, avoid placing cargo in a way that blocks the satellite radio antenna. For more information on Sirius XM radio, go to www.siriusxm.com. Press audio to view the current audio source. Press the audio button again while an audio mode is displayed or touch the source key to view the full list of available audio sources. Touch Customize Audio Sources, then drag your preferred sources to the launch bar to customize the lower keys to your preferred settings. Touch Back to confirm the setting. Touching an audio key on the launch bar will switch to that source. Use these controls to move through stations, tracks, or folders. When in AM or FM radio mode, touch the menu key and then touch Scan to scan through broadcasting stations, or touch Refresh to refresh the list of stations. In Sirius XM radio mode, there are touchscreen keys for choosing channels and categories. To set the current station or channel as a preset, touch and hold one of the six preset keys. To adjust the settings for the audio system, touch settings on the launch bar, then touch sound and the audio feature you wish to adjust. The speed sensitive volume feature increases the volume level at higher speeds and decreases it at lower speeds. <laughs> If your vehicle is not equipped with this instrument panel, please see your owner's manual for more information. The Traffic Sign Recognition, or TSR system, helps to provide the driver with information about the most recently detected speed limit. Using a multi-sensing front camera unit located in front of the inside rearview mirror, the system captures the road sign information and displays the detected signs in the vehicle information display. The TSR information is always displayed at the top of the vehicle information display and optionally in the main central area of the display screen. 
To enable or disable the system, use these controls to select settings. Driver assistance. Then speed limit sign to toggle the system on or off. The Hill Start Assist system automatically keeps the brakes applied to help prevent the vehicle from rolling backward in the time it takes the driver to release the brake pedal and apply the accelerator when the vehicle is stopped on a hill. The Hill Start Assist system will operate automatically when the shift lever is in a drive or reverse position and the vehicle is stopped completely on a hill with the brakes applied. The maximum holding time is 2 seconds for Hill Start Assist. After 2 seconds, the vehicle will begin to roll back as the Hill Start Assist system disengages. If your vehicle is not equipped with this instrument panel, please see your owner's manual for more information. The Rear Automatic Braking, or RAB, system can assist the driver when the vehicle is backing up. RAB operates when the shift lever is in the reverse position and the vehicle speed is less than approximately 9 miles per hour. The system will be automatically turned on every time the ignition switch is placed in the on position. If a risk of a collision with an obstacle is detected when your vehicle is backing up, the RAB system warning indicator will flash in the vehicle information display. A red frame will appear in the center display, if so equipped, and the system will chime three times. The system will then automatically apply the brakes. After the automatic brake application, the driver must apply the brake pedal to maintain brake pressure. To enable or disable the system, use these controls to select settings. Driver assistance. Emergency brake. Then rear to toggle the system on or off. If this light does not blink, your battery may be too weak to communicate to the vehicle. If this occurs, the battery may need to be replaced. Replacing the battery in your intelligent key can be simple if you follow this procedure. First, see the owner's manual for the recommended battery before replacing. Next, release the lock knob and remove the mechanical key from the intelligent key. Place a cloth over a small flathead screwdriver and insert the tip into this slit. Now twist the screwdriver to separate the intelligent key into two pieces. Look at the battery to observe which side is up so you can put the replacement battery in the same way. Ensure your hands are clean and free from oil and grease before touching anything inside the key fob. Carefully hold the new battery by the edges every time you pick it up. Remove the discharge battery while being careful not to touch the internal circuits or electrical terminals. Gently place the new battery into the intelligent key with the negative side oriented in the same direction you noted during removal. Align the tips of the two halves and then close the key fob by pushing along the edges. Lastly, operate the intelligent key to ensure it works properly. If you need assistance with replacement, it is recommended you visit a Nissan dealer. The headlight switch is located on the lever on the left side of the steering column. To turn on your front parking lights, tail lights, license plate light, instrument panel lights, and front LED accent lights, Turn the headlight switch to this position. To turn on the front headlights, turn the switch to this position. All the other lights will stay on. To turn on your high beam headlights, push this lever forward. You'll see a blue indicator light illuminate. Pull it back towards you to return to low beam. The blue indicator light will turn off. To make your high beam headlights flash on and off, pull the lever towards you and release it. Fog lights create a wide beam pattern, Focus lower than the headlights. This minimizes reflected light and helps you see better in foggy conditions. If your vehicle is equipped with fog lights, here's how to activate them. To use the fog lights, your headlights must be on and low beam selected. Rotate the collar to this position and your fog lights will come on. Rotate the collar to the off position to deactivate the fog lights. If you turn the high beam headlights on, the fog lights will automatically turn off. The auto light system allows the headlights to be set so they turn on and off automatically based on exterior lighting conditions. To activate this system, move the headlight switch to the auto position and push the ignition switch to the on position. To turn the system off, turn the headlight switch to any other setting. The auto light system will also keep the headlights on for a period of time after you push the ignition switch to the off position. There is a light sensor that controls the auto light system on the top of the instrument panel. Keep this area clear of papers and other material. With Android Auto, you can access some of the features of your Android device through your vehicle. Visit www.android.com auto for a list of available functions and compatibility. 
If Android Auto is not already installed on your device, you will need to download the Android Auto app to your Android mobile device to use this feature in your vehicle. First, visit the Google Play Store on your phone to download the Android Auto app to your device. Then launch the app on your Android device and follow the prompted directions to set up the application. Next, connect your Android device to the USB port. Once connected, the startup information screen will appear on the display. Touch Yes to use Android Auto. Touch this icon to display a list of available apps and touch to select. Press the menu button to return to normal vehicle functions. To return to the Android Auto screen, touch the Android Auto icon on the launch bar. You may change the settings so that Android Auto will not automatically connect every time your phone is plugged into your vehicle. To adjust these settings, press Menu. Then touch Connections. Touch Apps. Touch this icon next to the device name. Then enable After USB Connection to set the feature to Always, Ask or Never. From this menu, you can also touch Nissan's Help for Android Auto to view helpful tips on using the app. For hands-free operation, you can press and hold this button on your steering wheel or touch this icon on your screen. You will not be able to use the phone handset while Android Auto is running. For best results when using Android Auto, speak clearly and reduce background noise by closing the windows and moonroof if so equipped. Also, direct the vents so that they are not pointing toward the vehicle microphone. The rear door alert functions under certain conditions to indicate there may be an object in one of the rear seats. Check the rear seats before exiting the vehicle. The rear door alert does not directly sense objects in the rear seats. Instead, it can detect when the rear door is opened or closed, indicating that there may be something in the rear seats. The system is activated when one of the rear doors is used within 10 minutes before being driven. If one of the rear doors is used but the vehicle is not driven within 10 minutes, the system will not be activated and a rear door must be reopened for the system to activate. When the driver exits the vehicle after arriving at a destination, a rear door must be open within a short time to deactivate the alert. If the driver exits the vehicle while the rear door alert is active, this message will be displayed and the horn will sound. Check the rear seat for all articles. If the doors are locked before the alert is deactivated, the horn will sound if selected. If the system is activated but the trunk is open before opening a rear door, the horn alert if selected will be delayed until after the trunk is closed. When the system is active, this message appears to remind the driver to check the rear seat. You can use the steering wheel switches to disable the rear door alert for the remainder of the current trip. Select Disable Alert to disable the alert. Using the steering wheel switch, select Dismiss Message to clear the display. If no selection is made, this message will disappear after a period of time. To enable or disable the horn function or turn the rear door alert off, use these controls to select settings. Vehicle settings. Rear door alert. Then highlight an option and press the OK button to change a setting or to turn the system off. 